Hello, everyone. This is Akira. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us in a special online event today. And um, I'm broadcasting from um, our ramen school uh, kitchen. And this is where uh, we you know, conduct our ramen school and like kind of practical part of it. And like this is where um, we uh, make well, like we make right, um, you know, a lot of different types of stocks, right? Like ramen and udon, right? And so today we are talking about, you know, well, I'm kind of excited about this topic because um, we are talking about like three ways you can do today to like, well, um, make your tonka to stock like thick one, right? Thick one better and um, basically faster, right? And then that means cheaper. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so like we've been having this uh, ramen school for like over 20 years, right? About 20 years, like in almost every month, right? Like, you know, we've been conducting this school and um, up to eight students, we have like a one class, right? And, you know, each student had like brings out like his her own idea, right? Of what, what kind of ramen they want to make. And, um, but tonkotsu is like on the top of the list, right? And, um, thick tonkotsu, you know, that's the most popular um, item like ramen stock in the world, right? But like, it is also um, most like the toughest, um, the most time consuming, right? And most labor intensive uh, stock to make. So like every single class, right? Like, you know, we uh, spend a lot of hours, you know, well, a lot of efforts, uh, a lot of labors into this stock, right? But like, you know, since this is the most popular stock, like, you know, so we, out of like 10 to 12 different types of stocks that we make, like in each class, um, you know, we have to make this stock, right? And then like, so we spend um, 10 hours, like 11 hours, you know, preparing this stock, right? And, you know, from scratch, of course. Um, so we've had like quite a bit of experience um, making this type of stock. And and we, we've learned like a lot of lessons and, you know, like, how can we shorten um, the time like, you know, we, we take to make this stock? How can we, um, well, uh, increase the yield, right? Because like we have to, like, you know, we start like, for example, like, you know, with a hundred um, gram, hundred kilograms of, like ingredients, but like we end up having like 60 kilograms of like 50 kilograms of, like tonkot stock, right? So like, you know, that yield is pretty bad. I mean, um, compared to other types of stock, right? So how can we increase the yield, right? So we've been like thinking and thinking like, you know, they like and kind of trying out like different like methods and experiments, right? And so like, um, yeah, so we, we did like a lot of stuff and they're like, you know, that's what we are sharing today uh, with you guys. So three things, right? Three things. And um, so that's very simple. They are very simple and you know, easy for you to start doing today. Okay, so the first one is going to be like use soft water right soft water okay what's a soft water what's a soft water right like have you heard of soft, what soft water is uh but like what is i think like to explain it better like you know kind of in a simple way um we should ask a question like okay what what is hard right like the opposite of soft like hard water right so hard water is um this way water like regular water that you can get like a from a tap right but like it, it contains a lot of minerals a lot of minerals like calcium, like magnesium, um, you know, like I wrote like, you know, a lot of like calcium, calcium, magnesium, right? Um, so there are a lot of these type of minerals in there. And so why, why is that bad, right? Why is that bad? So because like when we are cooking the stock, right? And let's say like these um, kind of drawings, like, you know, I wrote like, um, these are like pork bones, right? Pork bones and they're like, you know, being cooked, right? In this pot. And what we are trying to essentially we are trying to do like when we are making stock is that like we are trying to move right um all these umami out of the ingredients into the water like can we are trying to transfer um umami out of the ingredients into the water right as fast as possible as fast as possible because you know that's the time is money right and like you know you spend like a lot of like money on like gas right and you no know, labor so we want to move um this umami, you know, into the water as fast as possible. So, but like when we have, uh, when we use hard water, right, in the water, right, um, you know, basically we are cooking the um, pork bones in water um, being heated, right? And, but like when we have like all this stuff in there, um, you know, there's less room for this umami to move into, you know, in the water, right? So um, that takes 
longer time to extract, you know, like to cook, you know, for mummy out of the ingredients, right? So, um, so it's like, um, so this is a graph, right? So kind of make it like simple for you guys to understand. Like, so harder, right? Harder and then longer, you know, it takes to, well, get the same amount of stock, get the same amount of mummy out of the ingredients in the water. So it's like, you know, like, as it gets harder, like the water gets harder, like you know, more minerals, and then gets longer and longer and longer to get the same amount of stock. You know, that's that's very unfortunate. And then, um, so how do we know? Like, um, then there's a level of hardness, right? There's a hardness in the water, and uh, so there are basically four levels, four levels. So type A, right? Type A, like this, is like um, there's a zero to like 60 milligrams of minerals per liter of the water right and um so places like new york madrid right dubai taipei melbourne um these places like are considered to have um you know this type of like kind of soft water right so for so like you don't have to worry about you know you guys are good right you, like, you don't have to worry about this right but like um if you are in los angeles right like helsinki or istanbul um you may have, you know, type B of water that's 60 to like 120 milligrams of minerals per liter. So you may see a little bit like an efficiency, like when you're cooking, like, you know, getting the stock out. And if you, like, if you live in Chicago, like Stockholm, like New Delhi, Brisbane, and you know, Australia, right? like it's 120 to 180 milligrams per liter of like hot water. So you may experience like kind of longer hours, like, you know, spent on like, you know, just um, setting from a stock pot and like cooking, like in the starting and, you know, um, but like there's even harder water, right? And so like Las Vegas, right? Bump, like in Copenhagen, Paris and Beijing, over 180 milligrams per liter. Like that's very, very hard water. And so let's say like if you are, cooking it like with that like type of water right and then like okay it took you um 10.5 hours to you know get that well um 100 liter like 100 liter of well no like 60 liter of like stock right like pokemon stock and it took you like when you're cooking like you know with that like uh water d and like you know it took you like 12 hours right 12 hours right <laughs> like we think about like how many hours like to, like the difference right and then like so how, how much money like you spend like in these ingredients like gas right and then you know labor which may be like most expensive like cost for you right and times right um number of days you are in business right and number of days you are you know like in, in years right and then like just multiply them and then like how much money you're losing right um every day right and so for some people um making running stuff like don't stock right it is no brainer uh, to you know install and start using soap water in some cases, and uh, and it was also this this like also applies to like cooking noodles too right. If you make like two kimchi like if you're serving two kimchi noodles like which takes like you know six minutes to eight minutes to cook, um, that difference would be like you know like multiply multiply so that's uh, over time right so and then. This is a very simple device, right? And so you just have like water supply and then just connect the uh, water softener and you can distribute to different taps, right? Different taps, um, you know, uh, we, we're gonna show you guys later, like in this kitchen, like how we connect it. But like, um, yeah, so, you know, just think about like one thing you can take out of this class, right? I take away from this class, you know, just use water, soft, like salt water, right? You salt water. So if you guys are, you know, like making running stocks in this area, then use um, salt water. Like if you're not using them like right now. Okay, so um, number two, right? Um, so yeah, production of like running stocks is like all about science, right? Like, you know, those processes that we talk about, like well, water uh, hardness, right? And that you know, how it affects the um, production running stock, right? So, um, so we've been running this school, right, for over 20, 20 years, right? And like you know, now over time, like you know, we 
uh, taught like well thousands of students and if like we you know develop like our processes like methods of how we can efficiently and you know cook um, our stocks like in a, the best way right basically you know more delicious and um, more you know better yield right and then like faster right so so we developed like um, our cooking method called like digital cooking right and um, so we teach method like we teach a class um, school like in this this method right so that this method like all like about numbers right numbers and like you know minute like time uh, like ratio like in um, the weight of the ingredients and stuff like so uh, the one of the things like is like it's called like optimal uh, cooking ratio right optimal cooking ratio and so the speaking of like production stock right like so this is the water to ingredients um, you know which are like four points right and ratio so we found like over time like we found that like okay optimal cooking ratio that's the most about ratio that allows us to cook the ingredients right so moving the um the umami of the ingredients into the water as fast as possible that's the ratio that we found only like, two to one ratio right so um so this is the chart right is a chart um so this is the, like uh, vertical axis, like vertical axis, is like stock density, right? And then X is uh, time. And so let's say that like this line represents that um, the popcorn stock, like thick popcorn stock, right? And uh, this is the light version, right? The light version, uh, heavier version, like we were talking about heavier version today. And um, so up here, right, like we need to retain this ratio like water ratio like water the ingredient ratio to the bank and you know and then like uh for the heavier stock like we, we're going to start boiling down so like up here like we maintain this ratio to like um you know like have like the best efficiency in like extracting the umami right, out of the ingredients but like you know uh it takes like really long time like to um get that umami out of like you know if you we just cooking at this rate, right? So like we like eventually start boiling down to reach like, for example, like eight, right? This is eight. And uh, for, but like for a light version, um, so we, we cook it and then like, um, after like we are done with like skin and scum, right? And then like, you know, we turn down the heat, right? And then like, you know, you just, just kind of gradually goes up like this, gradually goes up and then like throughout the cooking, uh, we maintain this ratio, right? So that um, the extraction, like, is, like, most efficient. Extraction of mommy is, like, most efficient, right? So this is that optimal cooking ratio that we teach in the school. And the next one is, like, for example, cooking temperatures. So cooking temperatures is, like, very, very important. And so, you know, we, we need to like control the cooking temperature throughout the like cooking of the stock. And then, so we first like start like, cooking, right? Like, you know, okay, we prep the ingredients, right? We wash them and everything and weigh them and everything, right? And then, um, so we're gonna start, right? From um, probably room temperature, um, you know, like some, some um, ramen shops like um, do the uh, pre-boiling the ingredients, right? Uh, to mainly to um, get rid of the smell of the ingredients, right? Like kind of animal smell, they want to get rid of them, right? But um, you know, we, but we have this process called like skim and scum, like, and then we take time to do that. So we don't do the pre-boiling and uh, there's a reason for it. And uh, then we're going to start by like, cooking ingredients, right? In the, in the room temperature water. And then we don't throw ingredients into the boiling water, right? Because if you put the like through the ingredients like boiling water, then like you know outside of the ingredients get cooked right first, right? So you know we're going to like cook the ingredients like from outside in, right? But you know we want to cook the ingredients like from inside out to you know get the umami from the inside and not from the core. So uh, that's why we start from the room temperature, and then so that way like you know we can reduce the amount of time like you know it takes to uh let the ingredients i mean the umami out and so skim and scum then uh so that's the over 95 degrees celsius that's the temperature that like 
um, the scams like come out like most like most in efficient way. So like we keep like at 95 degrees Celsius and cooking for uh, first density. And so just a like, range between like 95 and 98 degrees Celsius, like that's the where, you know, like most like mummy extraction happen like in a most efficient way, right? So like we can keep the temperature, you know, between this range, right? And then after that, like we're gonna start boiling it down, right? So you know, boiling down like means like you know we have to evaporate the water, so uh, we're going to you know bump up the temperature like close to 100. And after that, like you know, okay, like we're done cooking, so like we're gonna strain it, right? Gonna fill that filter out like all the ingredients, and so just the temperature like kind of gradually goes down, like going down, 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 like while we're straining, but like not rapidly. And after we're straining. Um, you're gonna cool them down, right? Cool them down like a rapid rate, um, because like there's a what we call like what they call like danger zone, right? Uh, between like 21 degrees Celsius and 52 degrees Celsius, and if the stock stays in this zone of temperature, right, that you know gets spoiled basically. So all the hours like we spend like 10 hours and stuff like you know this gets spoiled right here, right? If we don't hurry in cooling them down. So after we cool them down, like, you know, below like, um, so like 15, like 10 degrees Celsius, we can put them in the fridge, right? If you put them in the fridge, like after we done straining, right? Like they're still hot and, you know, they don't cool down like in a fridge, like, you know, as fast as we want them to be, uh, we want them uh, to. And so like, so they probably, it takes them like probably two hours to cool them down, right? In the fridge. so. You know they they make it spoil like by the time they're cool enough, right? So that's a kind of so you know cooking temperature like we need to control them right. And uh, after that like we store the uh, stock right, and then what we do like it's like we got hundred liters like hundred kilograms of tonko to stock right, and um, put in the fridge you know for the use um, to to be used like next day right and. This stock is good for um, two to three days, like in the free refrigerator. So um, what we do is that like we um, separate it into like kind of smaller batches, right? And let's say like 25 kilo, like each, right? And you know, it's like this one serving stock is like 300 grams. So this is like about uh, 80 servings, right? 80 servings each. And so this is smaller, I mean, the minimum batch of stock, right? That we use on demand, right? So, you know, once we put the uh, pot, like container out and then like, you know, like put on the heat and start heating and then um, then you, you get like customers, like probably um, hundred person, like hundred people, like hundred, like hundred to like 200 people, like uh, for lunchtime. And then so like, you use like probably two batches, like one batch, two batches, right? So you're not gonna waste, um, you know, as much uh, of the stock that you like, well, I uh, put a lot of effort in making um, in like, you know, if you just you know, put the whole thing out, right? And then just, you know, warm it, like and heat it. And then like, you know, some of them get, right, get spoiled, like, cause you know, just sitting there like for hours, right? Or like gets evaporated and lose some of it, um, you know, in the air, right? So, um, so that's what we do. Like, you know, just put the rest of them like in the fridge, right? And then, you know, just, uh, separate it into like, well, um, kind of small, like kind of expected, like amount of consumption per uh, certain period of the, like in business, right? Um, for lunchtime, like uh, two hours or something, or, you know, so what's expected to be consumed, right? So that's the kind of practice that you should do um, to kind of maintain the quality and to maintain that kind of wastage, right? And so the third one would be, straining stocks right like when it comes to like thick tonkot stock right straining stocks like it's just wow that's a lot of work and so how many hours i like you know spend on only only on stock straining right um so cooking tonkot stock like it's notoriously time consuming notoriously labor intensive and straining stock like we just talked about like in just one of the processes but like that's like really uh, time consuming, like when it comes to like heavy chunk of stock, right? So let's say like the 
the time like you know it takes you like uh, to make the Sanaman Tonko stock like takes like 13 hours in total, right? And one of my prep time like uh, one of my like skimming stock and they like um, eight hours cooking and um, if it's like 60 liters of like high density stock, then like straining may take from from like one hour to like two hours, right? And after that, you have like spent like probably an hour cleaning, right? Um, so like after hours of like cooking and like you're so tired and like you still have to strain them, right? And that's labor in this way. It's very hard work and um, yeah, so it's it's a lot of work. And then so. For example, like case one, um, like this is a real case, right? Um, um, these two cases, but like, you no, know, both of them are two given, right? Two given tongue stock. And it, this one, like we have density, like that's 12. Um, and it takes about like, three hours, right? It takes them three hours, um, like hand training, right? And then the like, yield is just 42 liters. And case two, like still like, you know, skim it like seafood tonkotsu and 1.5 hours, like 90 minutes, just to strain the stock, right? The yield is just 30 liters. So just to get 30 liters of like stock, like that's like, it takes them like just 90 minutes to just to strain it, strain the stock, right? That's uh, <laughs> that's a lot of time like you spend like, and think about like how like you operate your business, like you do this like um, five days a week, right? And so like times five days, like 15 hours, right? A week, right? And you know, like 20, 20 uh, days in operation, like month, and then, wow, like I can't even really calculate, like you know, like 300 hours or something, um, yeah, per month, right? And years, right? Like, so how many hours, like, do you spend on this, like, just training, right? Um, so yeah, like time consuming and labor intense, like energy intensive, uh, low yield, right? And because like some of these stocks actually are lost in straining um, because like you strain a hand by hand, right? And then um, these residuals of like meats and bones like still contain some stock in them, but like, you know, you can't really get them out from these um, residuals because like um, they, they're like stuck in there. Uh, you have to like kind of squeeze them out uh, by your hand or something. Uh, and then kind of protest the flavor because um, you kind of like force that um, thing to like, you know, the stock to be out of the ingredients, right? So you get that sort of like kind of tiny pieces of like, um, bones and like meats into the stock as well. So that makes them like kind of, you know, taste a um, bit uh, off. And um, so we talked about like a danger zone, right? So like, you know, it takes him three hours to strain. Um, so because, you know, so that means that like the stock may be like already spoiled, right? Just from the straining uh, for long hours. Um, so, you know, maybe like it's very like, there's like kind of risky of like kind of getting the stock like spoiled, like, you know, while you have to strain it like for long hours, right? So, yeah, but like, so, you know, how can we like, um, you know, maybe shorter. Um, so yeah, and then so we usually normally use this kind of like um, hand strainer, right? Hand strainer, and then you still use it, but like um, you have to like kind of constantly like kind of shake it and like use that kind of spatula or something to um, you know get that juice out into like kind of small holes, right? Um, but like it's very very hard job. But like you know, you have to like constantly kind of shaking it, like you know, for an hour, <laughs> two hours, three hours. So that's that's really, um, yeah, a lot of work, like tough work. And so um, so that's why like we um, kind of develop like this kind of um, automatic like soup straining machine. And so it just, you just like um, get a stock out, right? And then, you know, just put, put it in there and then like, there's a yeah so there, there's like there's like a mesh um kind of well uh the pot like in there like that spins up like and then um using a centrifuge like kind of effect right and then that stock like all the stuff like gets out through these holes and then you know it just um kind of gets dispensed from this um hole right and then yeah 
then like you, you're just getting like all that that's pure stock right into the um, separate pot. So yeah, so this is, this is what we create. Basically, so this is our language. And then you just have to um, just throw away the all the residuals, right? Residuals. And then yeah, depending on the type of like stock you're using, right? Making like you know you can just throw it down a little bit and you know um, just to, to see your um, kind of specs of your uh, stocks you make, right? So it's very uh, efficient way to you know make. It. So the this person, right? Um, who which like uh, spent like three hours and just training, just, just training, right? Um, now like spend like four, just 40 minutes, right? Just 40 minutes. And then the yield uh, increased like maybe 50, uh, was like 56 liters, 56 liter, liters, right? So that's like a difference of like, um, that's a difference of like uh, 14 liters, like which from, well, which, which maybe like uh, from, Translates into like maybe 40 servings, 40 servings per, um, you know, the day, right? So that's that's a lot of that's like that can be translated a lot of money. And then this person now spent like just 30 minutes, a 30 minutes, right? So just 60 minutes gone, right? 60 minutes gone. Um, and then that was like 33% uh, up yield, right? So that means like. Um, Almost like 10 liter, 10 liter up, right? So again, like you know, it's about like 30 servings uh, more, right? That you can get like out of this strain, just to changing uh, like how you strain the stock. So um, that's a lot of improvement, and like you know, especially the time, right? Time it takes to, but like this 14 liter uh, difference, like, you know, 30 servings difference, like, you now that was also like transiting time, right? Because you know, that's the last time that you, well, uh, could have like, you know, regained from like using this uh, soup straining machine, but like it's it's gone forever, right? You know, like by hand straining. So, so this is very uh, useful uh, tool that you can use, right? And um, so look at these um, places, right? Uh, so this is induction cooker. And the reason we use the induction cooker is like ambient temperature is low, right? And, but like this is very powerful. These are very powerful induction cookers. Uh, seven to like um, 10 kilowatts um, power. And notice this uh, tap, right? This tap, um, it's in Japanese, but like um, it's all soft water. So like, these all these taps like um, um, you know brown soft water right brown soft water so like you know you can directly um, supply the you know, water soft water to the pot uh, that's been cooking um, yeah so for example this is 65 liter pot like um, you know, that's not a big one like we have like 120 liter pot uh, but like so that one to two ratios like it might be like 20 liter like up here like you know that's the ingredients right and then up here like that's the water amount of water we're putting in so then like we so we maintain the uh, water ratio water to ingredient ratio and so the water is supplied from here right um so this is a water softener um it's a very simple um device right um so you just have you just have like this filter that gets cleaned um, by like uh, uh, salt water, salt water. So uh, once in a while, like we have to add like salt to make it like salty enough, right? The water inside. And so the filter gets cleaned and so by salt water and then, you know, and they can uh, convert uh, the, the hard water into the salt water and then just distribute it like through throughout the kitchen where we need the salt water, right? Right, so um, so this is our kitchen, and um, yeah, so like uh, every other month, like we are offering uh, ramen school, right? And well, um, thanks to you guys, like you know, we well we are having like kind of full classes, full courses, um, every single class, right? Every single course, right? But like just it's every two months. So like um, the this this month, right? We are having like another one, but like that's full, and. Uh, 
The next one will be uh, from November, and I think we are accepting applications. So for you know, if you guys are interested in, uh, please check out our uh, website and like contact us right for um, in, uh, available seats. And you know, of course, like we have like online school that's uh, that's been available, and you know all the classes out, and you know we teach all these stuff I just talked about, right? And like you know, this is just um, just uh, one part, like this fraction of like what we teach in the school. Um, so for those of you like who are interested in like you know, well, honing your skills and um, of course, um, you know making your stocks like ramen better and you know um being able to, like make them cheaper and faster like with less labor um you know just check out our online school and you know of course like we have our soup string machine like that's available for like north america europe and like elsewhere in the world so um please contact us like if you're interested in that and yeah and definitely uh change the way you make your concord stock Right, if you just start doing these three things today. So, okay, so thank you so much for um, watching, and then uh, I'll see you guys in the next class. So, thank you very much. Bye bye.